Welcome back to an, a special edition of Guru Talk Underground. That's right, we're going underground. Today, we're gonna to be talking with the, uh, someone who's in the know in Mexico. He's gonna give us the inside scoop on underground labs. I know a lot of you guys wanna know what it goes into, how they make these anabolic steroids underground, what the different brands are, which ones you should look out for, which ones you should use, which ones you shouldn't use, and then what, what are the legitimate products actually coming out of the pharmacy there in Mexico. So we have uh, my friend Felix Garay on the line. Uh, welcome to the show. Hey, Dave, it's an honor to be with you. Thank you, it's, a, it's an honor to have you here because you know, there's not many people that have like the, uh, I guess you could say the inside scoop on what's going on in the underground lab scene, also in the pharmaceutical scene because Mexico, you know, you can walk into a pharmacy there and buy anything. The problem is that it's legal, but it's, the, the real problem is that you don't really know what's good and what's not good. So. Um, I want you to, you know, enlighten us a little today. Maybe we should start off with, with, with let's talk about pharmacies. You know, how, when I go to Mexico, there's pharmacies on every corner. They obviously are very popular. Um, which pharmacies have the best anabolic steroids? Because, you know, I, I was always told, and I always knew in the past, that the, the pharmacies that are in the popular areas like Cancun and, and Acapulco, they tend to, to, to cater to tourists and sometimes they're not necessarily the best places to buy stuff. Explain to me how Mexican pharmacies are set up. You just say it Dave. I mean, well, first of all, I'm, uh, I'm sorry if my English is not that well for all the audience, but I'm going to do my best. Well, uh, the first thing, uh, when the American uh, people and ev people from, from every part of the world, you know, came, especially, you, you say it, Cancun, and all the border cities, you know, they come and they, they try to, you know, buy stuff that actually works. Mm -hmm. the, there are some uh, legitimate, you know, it's a very uh, hard topic, you know, to discuss. And there's a lot of, you know, YouTube channels that talk about this and talk about that. But I, I mean, I live here. So when you see the reality in here, when you go, when you compete, when you use the stuff, and when you search for the stuff, you, you, I mean, you see a lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, stupid uh, shit just floating <laughs> around in there. So, uh, in Cancun especially, you see a lot of tourists coming, and you know, there's a big avenue. I mean, every people that come to Cancun or you know Playa del Carmen or uh, sure, a lot of a lot of uh, uh, cities of that. I mean. Dave, when you, I don't know if, if you have go before, but the pharmacies put like big uh, uh, panels out. The, 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 I mean, it's, it's stupid and funny at the same time. Because you, <laughs> I mean, they put for sale anti antibiotics, anabolic steroids, human <laughs> growth hormone, Viagra. So what the tourist, the tourist yeah. people, what, the, what, what they do? Well, they go there, you know? Right. The problem is this, man. Maybe 10 years ago, Maybe 10 years ago or more, you you go there and you will find legitimate stuff. The problem that is going right now is that the owners of the pharmacies, that those pharmacies, and not only those, I mean, I'm talking about tourist places, like beaches places, you know? Yeah. Um, they are actually, I mean, they're not bodybuilders. They don't give a fuck about bodybuilding, but they know that the, the steroid market is very big. So what they start doing, they start... Uh, selling clones. I mean, they start selling clones about pharmaceutical stuff like testosterone. There are these products. Counterfeits. What you're saying is counterfeits they're selling. Yeah, totally. So they are not regulated, you know, by government. I don't know if they, well, I, I could actually know a couple of owners of those pharmacies. And, and, they, and I, I, I asked them, like, hey, man, is there a problem that you sell, you, you sell here? Pakistan sustenance, and, <laughs> and and they're like, I mean, uh, I don't give a fuck, you know. I buy from this guy and those and 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 that guy, and I I, I know I I'm so regular really pe so regular Mexican people will go and sell to the pharmacies, almost like the the pharmacies are buying from yeah. steroid dealers, essentially. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 
That's the, the best way to say it. <laughs> the pharmacies are buying from underground guys and underground sellers. And a lot of these guys are fucking, you know, making... They, this, is, this is... Look, this is fucking funny. I have a friend that uh, he manufactures. He manufactures, you know, the classic vials of, of steroids. He's homebrew stuff. They fucking call me like 3 a.m. I was fucking... Finally, I was sleeping because I was very high on clenbuterol and I was shaking all the fucking night. <laughs> I, I, I feel fucking fall asleep finally. And this guy fucking called me like, hey, guy, hey, uh, Felix, you know what? Look what I just got into the mail. Okay. He got a fucking big machine that was able to do ampules. Oh, so wow. That's a fucking problem for me. I mean, yeah. because, you know, there have you, uh, I mean, he has more uh, uh, range to do fake stuff. I mean, right. I'm not saying he's making 100% fake stuff, but he can do products that can, you know, it, that is, you know, in Mexico, we have a lot of freedom, man. A so, lot of freedom. So what you're saying basically is a lot of people assume that ampules, because they're hard to make, would be real, as opposed to yeah. the 10cc bottles, which, you know, tend to be the fake things out there because they're very easy to do. But now what of you're course. saying is even in, in Mexico now, they have ampule machines where they can make it, they can put anything in these animals they want. Yeah, because I don't, I don't, I don't remember, but, but there was a pro bodybuilder. Well, actually, I remember, but I don't want to say his name. <laughs> he used to, he used to say, if it doesn't come in an ampule, don't use it. Right, but man. This is what I'm telling you right now. There are ampules right now being counterfeit. So wow. my recommendation, my recommendation to the to the community that come to Mexico and try to, I mean, it's not easy. I mean, it's it's not cheap. It's it's not easy. Come sometimes down here. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of you know dangers coming. You know, the situation in the country is very extremely dangerous. And then you come and then you get ripped off. So what I at least what what you guys can do, I'm gonna recommend you. If you go this, I remember this. Oh man, this is this is good. I remember the the shooting that you make when the Tijuana Pro. You yes. remember when you come yeah. and you go to a ph the ph uh, pharmacy? Well, yeah. there was, I mean, not uh, a lot of guys. I show them that video. Uh -huh. You know, they don't they don't understand the English like hundred percent, but they were laughing about the prices and about the brands. They were the the, the fat motherfucker that guy was offering you. Man, that that those are the most absolutely serious brands in all the fucking Oh, really? Country. Yeah. I, just to recap for people who might not know, I had gone to Tijuana for the Tijuana Pro Show several years ago, and we went to a pharmacy there, and there was a guy who was selling to the pharmacy in the back. I had to go in the back, like the back uh, room, so to speak, in the back hallway, alleyway, and he was showing me all these different brands he had, and, and what you're saying is they were all terrible brands, and I didn't, I didn't obviously I didn't buy anything, yeah. but I wanted to see what they had available there, and they had a lot of yeah. stuff, but... You're saying, so a lot of the stuff in Mexico now is fake. How do you know what's real and what's, and what's not? Aside from getting the Roy test kits and testing and stuff. But how, I mean, what, what brands are good and, and where, would you, where should you go if you want to try to find real stuff there? Okay, look, um, when William uh, take that kit out, let me tell you, that kit kicks a lot of asses here in Mexico. I was one of the first guys that actually buy that kit. And I actually ordered from you. And uh, man, that that kit shook down like, I mean, there has to be like 30. Last night I was like counting the underground brands. Yeah. There were like 30, 32, man. Wow. And uh, yeah, I was, there was a guy, this is a very interesting stuff that he was he was making. He buy a lot of kids and he was, he has on social, uh, his social page and he was calling his social page, steroid testing kids available. So the people, he was charging like, I don't know what, uh, how much money, but he was charging for, uh, you send it your vial and he was, you know, Oh, he'll test it for you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and he, t he will show you the, the results, man, that thing shut down like, 25 underground labs, they changed their names and the right. labels, you know. Well, let me, Felix, let me ask you this question. Why would why would these underground labs put nothing into the products? Don't they want to sell products that can make money from it? Obviously, if the steroids work, then they're going to make more money that way, don't you think? 
Yeah, it's it's obvious. I mean, it's obvious. But let me tell you this: uh, all the underground labs start good. They start good. They order their raw powders. Mm -hmm. They pass through the cust, cust, uh, customs. In Mexico, is more easier, I guess. I don't know. What what I know is um, they all start good. Right. They, they put the first, the second, the third batch. They come like, you know, 100%, maybe the second 95%, maybe the third one 80%, which is, I mean, accept, uh, acceptable. But they start having trouble. I don't know why. I don't know if it's a cruise or what. But um, they start like having problems getting the raw materials inside Mexico. Ah. And then they, they kind of start growing a lot. They expose themselves a lot that the, you know, you know, they start, you know, getting money and they, they, the, the owners, I'm talking about the owners. They get greedy. I, I they basically get greedy and they start cutting yeah. the products yeah. down. Totally. So what well, the customer, you know, um, they, they start like showing the money. They, they, they are like, you know, uh, Greg can tell you about how, how you can get a lot of money on that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I follow him a lot. Yeah. And um, yeah, they they get in the in the green spot and uh, I mean, well, the red spot. And uh, as you put that address and and that state, and they start ordering by kilograms of stuff, they just can't get the raw materials there. And what they do? Well, they order a hundred grams of propionate and they try to do a thousand or two thousand vials or maybe. You know, maybe they don't get even those hundred grams. They they start getting a lot of problems to get the stuff inside. I actually, it's it's ridiculous, man. How the the Chinese people are trying to figure yeah, out. Tell get, tell us how they smuggle the stuff. How do you guys get the stuff into Mexico? How, how I can hear you. You have friends that 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 make this stuff. So you, how do they get these raw powders, the propionate and the cypionate and the DECA. How do they get the raw powders into Mexico? There's got to be a way. You you know, yeah. right? Yeah, and it's very funny. And uh, actually, um, before, to, uh, I, I can prepare, you know. To, to <laughs> no, I know you did. That's why I'm asking you. I'm baiting you with the question. Yeah, well, the Chinese guys, well, you search, you know, internet, it's a fucking your best friend or your worst enemy. Yeah. And, um, they actually look for, uh, you know, dealers and all that stuff. You know, you can just Google. But, man, they, they the Chinese people are very smart. I mean, they are sent a friend of mine just sent me this. This is a box containing 100 grams of powder. Okay. The that's milk. Says, it says milk tea on it, right? It, it says milk tea yeah. anytime, anywhere. Okay. So, <laughs> next, and actually, and I, it's, it's a product from Taiwan. It says 100 grams. But right. what, what we don't know is they sent five, for example, my friend gave me this box and he says it's five boxes of 20 grams of test propionate, man. They are, you know, perfectly sealed and perfect. They pass through the customs. This shit. How, I mean, how, many, how, many, how many milligrams is in there? How many grams are in there? of pro, pro? 20 grams, 20 grams. I mean, the box. That's 20,000 20, 20, milligrams of testosterone propionate per pouch there, right? That's yeah, a lot of vials. So, yeah, and it's funny. I mean, I think it's funny how they send it because yeah. they actually do it very smart. Very smart. I, think, I love I it. I think it's very smart. The, do all the raws come like that? The, the Decker and the, the Trembolone and all that other stuff? Yeah, I mean, depends on your dealer. I, I, I have uh, this guy send me this one. This is from another of his dealers. They don't give a fuck. He sent them like this way. Oh, I don't, don't know if label. you remember, uh, uh, there was a documental in, in floating around from uh, from some uh, television program. And I mean, I remember the, the underground guy was cooking with this. They, they send it here like in me metal pouch, like aluminum pouch. This is test propionate too. This right. is seven, 70 grams, they say. Wow. T -T 70 grams. So, I mean, it depends. I'm, I'm sorry. It depends on the dealer, the mm. way that they send it to you. But the problem is when you order a lot of, of, of shit, you know, this guy, my friend, uh, he has had a lot of problems, you know, a lot of problems with this stuff. 
And uh, he has been taken down like 20 grand because he started ordering more and more. And the more you order, the you know, like any other illegal stuff, I think the, the more you, you move, the, the, you know, it's higher the risk. And then he lose a lot of money. And what he do? He starts fucking putting a oil only in, in, in you ah, know. Ah, that's terrible. Now, what would be the price of like, say, 70 grams of test propionate? It's pretty China. cheap, man. You will be I mean, uh, surprised. It's pretty cheap. Uh, Seventy. Uh, I, let me tell you, a hot, by a hundred, hundred grams of this propionate can run by a hundred dollars, maybe ninety dollars. Oh wow, and that's a hundred thousand milligrams of, of test propionate. It, it, yeah, extremely, extremely cheap. Now, now com contrast that with like another drug like DECA. What would DECA cost for 100 grams? DECA will cost 100 grams like $220. Okay, that's not I mean, that I, bad. Yeah, it's not that bad. I mean, the, the, the expensive stuff are, you know, Prima Bolan is very, very expensive. Like right. for 100 grams, it, they, they can, it can be like, uh, I can tell you like one uh, thousand you know. Gotcha. So it's, it's much high, it's much more costly. So do you think that there's any te real prima bone floating around Mexico? No, no, no. For, no. Actually, I don't trust him. I mean, there's a lot of underground labs that you talk to them and uh, they tell you, hey, these these uh, raw powders, they, they don't come. I don't buy from China, man. I'm buying from Europe. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, that's not true. That's <laughs> fucking not true. And I don't give a fuck out how you know, the, they because they send you like screenshots and, you know, from right, you, right. or pictures. And I mean, I don't think about, you know, the, the, the those kind of, of, of right. stuff. What about I, pills I think, now? Do, do people have pill presses in, in Mexico and they're making real pills? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, they're buying the, the machine presses, the pill presses, mm -hmm. and they are uh, importing it. That's some... Uh, there, there's no big problem huh, to do that. It's, it's pretty easy. I mean, you can find them on the internet too, and right. uh, there's a lot of legal companies to do them. And they, here's the funny thing. I have a friend, I mean, not this guy, because this guy only do injectable stuff, but uh, I have a, a, a guy that actually sells a lot. And, and this guy uh, buys a machine from, you know, another country. You know what country. And uh, he, he <laughs> when he passed it, Cause it's a fucking big, you know. There, there, there's a twenty uh, hundred kilos machine or oh, thirty wow. hundred kilos. Okay. So they are very big, and they and he came to the border and stuff in Mexico, and they were like, "Hey, man." I mean, he's like all fucking jacked and you know, tattooed in the fucking <laughs> face, and he's ugly as fuck. But anyways, he he crosses the the, the machine, and in the Mexican side, you know, uh, they asked him, "Hey, what do you want that for?" And he was like. I want to make candies for kids, you know, <laughs> I want to make candy. And, then, and there's no problem. I mean, he just paid the, the, the I don't know how it's called, but you, uh, bribe, bribe, the yeah. taxes, uh, but in Mexico it's called oh, like different. import duties. Yeah. Duties. Yeah. Yeah. That. And, uh, but I mean, that's completely legal, man. I mean, that's legal stuff. So he imported and, uh, he took it to his, his, uh, state and he actually is uh, making, legitimate stuff. I mean, he orders the stenosolol, he's ordering the oxymetolone, right. he's actually ordering uh, um, the legal stuff like the excipients, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, the colorants and the punch pressers, and they actually sure. uh, make the, the, you know, I, let's say RX Muscle Labs, he's making his own, you know, pill press. Right, right. It's how, interesting, how, man. How hard is it to make a, a batch of like a, a, you know 10 cc bottles of testosterone, you know, sipionate or something like that? How long does that take, the process? Oh, I know you, you I, sent me some videos that we could kind of put up too of the, of the process, but how long does it take? No, man, it can take, I mean, from my experienced guy, let's say, and, and well, that's a very interesting topic because an, an experienced guy, he can make it in 35 to 45 minutes. The, the, really? the process is, yeah, it's very fast. The, the slow uh, part of the process is filtration. When you filter this stuff uh, to get it sterile, you know, to yeah. get it sterile, it's, it's kind of, you know, slow. But um, normally it took like an hour 
to do that. So, so what do you mix it in? You take the powder, you mix it into a liquid. What's the liquid you're putting it in? Alcohol? Yeah. The first thing, I mean, you have your your um, ba uh, your baker, baker, and uh, you put, you know, you first sterilize the the. There, you can buy sterilizers. You can just, uh, I'm by, I mean, I'm not recommending to do this to anyone. So, no, I know. But but I'm, yeah. I'm just, I'm just asking. I see you have a, the stove on with the with, with a pan. You yeah. have the beaker in the in the pan, heating up obviously the whatever you the liquid in there, so that it will be. So, I'm assuming so it'll solubilize the the powder. Yeah. Well, first, uh, what you first have to do is, you know, put the, the you have to measure in a scale. How mm -hmm. much grams? Right. You know, how much uh, milliliters of oil? There's a there's a calculator. It's actually online. Uh, a calculator that tells you what you want to do and how many grams you need and how many milliliters of solvent and how many milliliters of alcohol you need. Right. So the first process is doing that. You know, measure it. You put it into the baker. You uh, put the first the alcohol, uh, benzyl alcohol, then you put the solvent, then you fucking mix it. And at, at the first, you have to wait, you know, because when you start doing the, the mixing stuff, when you start mixing this stuff, it kind of gets like blurry, blurry, especially the propylene. Cloudy. It, cloudy. It, it gets like blurry. So you yeah. have to wait until it gets very clear. Then you put the, the oil. I mean, there's people that using grapeseed oil from the, I mean, and I'm not talking about uh, pharmaceutical oil. I'm talking about, <laughs> you know, supermarket. Uh, oh, really? Grapeseed oil or, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, cottonseed oil, you know, all the. the uh, What's the guys. most popular? What's the most popular people use? Uh, well, here in Mexico, I have heard that most uh, labs use grapeseed oil. Okay. They use grapeseed oil because, you know, when they search online recipes, yeah. That's the, the most common. And and it and it actually is okay because you guys is are filtering it through a filter syringe, right? Which so that, that would take out, I would assume, any of the impurities and, and bacteria, correct? Yeah. Well, that's an old a, a, an old uh, method. Right mm. now, you can you can buy some. Imagine like sand clocks. You know that they're big here and they they like. Well, you buy those sand cl uh, sand clocks. They are uh, filters. And they're yeah. like this. So you can put 500 cc's, oh, 500 wow. ml's, and there's a vacuum pump connected. Yeah. And that's like, like ta -ta 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 -ta, because man, once once I have a friend that he makes his own stuff. He, he's not a, he, he doesn't have an underground lab because he doesn't trust shit. And uh, <laughs> he, he uh, uh, still do that method that you mentioned that like the, the filter uh, syringe by hand yeah yeah no he fucking couldn't move his <laughs> finger for like 10 days man he was like man i never was he prefers to do things like boston like fucking doesn't filter shit and you know oh no it, so but now they have they have big big filters you know apparatuses that that will do it you know for you automatically right with a pump yeah 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 okay. yeah i mean it's, it's must uh, just easier you know especially when you buy that little machine yeah like vacuum is making that pressure so it's helping how with the long time. does that I mean, take to filter like 10 cc's of it Oh, 10 cc's, it can take like five minutes. Oh, okay, all right. So Yeah, it's pretty fast. How many vials would you make in like a, a normal batch? Like if, you, if you're going to make a batch of like, you know, testosterone sipping and make 10 cc bottles out of it, how many, how many bottles would you make in one batch, say? Normally, the people do uh, 50 by, 50. by, you know, because the baker, you, it, it's, it's because the, 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 the baker, you know, mm -hmm. the, the 500 ml baker, you know, they, they, Try to do, you know, uh, 50 from a time. So right. they don't waste time and they save, uh, you know. Gotcha. Now, I, I know this can change, you know, tomorrow. But as of right now, what what underground labs would you say are pretty reputable in Mexico? Well, uh, there's actually one, man, one really? that I can't recommend. Okay. I can't recommend. Uh, can I say the name? Say it, sure. <laughs> I mean, they're not sponsoring me, eh, guys? I mean, they, they actually say dope here, so. <laughs> so, um, no. Uh, the name of the underground lab is Arven. A-R-U-V-E-N. It's very good, man. These guys actually are making their stuff in the 
place that is actually a sterilized place. Wow. It's a very okay. good place. It's a very good brand. Right now, I'm actually uh, with the Clenbuterol right now, and I, I was I was shaking. I mean, with, with, with you one told me you didn't sleep. You didn't sleep. Yeah. Now, yeah. what's the legality in Mexico? Is it our steroid? Is it legal to do all that stuff in Mexico? Well, the things have been changed, you know, from five years to now, because I'm, I'm 26. I've been in this uh, sport, uh, active and inactive, from uh, in from the, my 16 years, yeah, from like 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, I, I was, you know, driving with all my stuff in, in, in my car, and police used to stop me and... I mean, military, because you know the the you know here here in Mexico is very common to see soldiers and uh, a lot of uh, cops, but not because of steroids, you know, just because uh, organized crime, you know, that stuff. So right. they were like, "Hey, man, you have some uh, coke or some fucking marijuana with you? No, uh, I'm a I'm an athlete, and what's that? Uh, they're steroids. Oh, I don't give a fuck. That was that was. Oh, they didn't, didn't care. care. So they didn't care back yeah. then. Yeah, they didn't care. But now, like five years from here, when you they are like more informed right now. So gotcha. it's kind, it's more. It's they are like, hey man, uh, because the, the the in the past you can say like, no, it's 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 legal. You can buy them from the from the pharmacy. Farm. But they they didn't know that trembolone is not legal. You know, trembolone is not in a pharmacy. Boldenone is not in a pharmacy. Right. Orals are not. So they were like, oh. This, so what's this? Well, it's just a bigger presentation, and they okay, have a good day, and that's it. But now, I actually got got stopped in here in Mexico with uh, some couple of vials, and I was like uh, with a federal, you know, agent, and he was like searching for drugs and right. he put the, the dog and all that <laughs> stuff, and he finds my testosterone bottle and my Deca bottle, and he was like, no, I, it, it was actually Trenbolone and Mastron and testosterone, yeah. So he was like. I was like, yeah, man, but uh, they're steroids, but um, I'm an athlete, and uh, they're legal, man. And he was like, hey, buddy, they're legal, but not all the substances were illegal. And I was like, oh, fuck. Oh, he knew, he knew, yeah. I mean, it, these guys are more informant right yeah. now. And there, was, there was no big problem. He was like, hey, man, okay, just take it easy and go over. Go the fuck away. So yeah, so it's but really they don't. No one really cares about steroids, which is the way it should be. It should be that way in the U.S. too, but we're very uptight over here, so. Um, yeah. What what brands are actually legitimate? Are there actually any pharmaceutical brands available in Mexico now that actually are made, you know, legitimately in a, in a pharmacy? Yeah, let me tell you the products, and I'm gonna name them slowly. To all the you know people that don't want to get ripped off, they're illegal. And uh, by the way, I'm I'm repeating, I'm not recommending the use, but I'm telling you the guys. Don't get ripped off and try to evade the underground stuff. Even if they're good, you know, they're You won't know. In other words, if you're a tourist, you're not going to know if it's good or not. So don't buy underground stuff if you don't know anyone yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. So there's testosterone and anthate in pharmacies. There's Sostenon, the Red Ejects, very known. Um, very expensive, they, though, too. Yeah. I'm going to name them. Testosterone and anthate, Sostenon. The decadurabalin, which is extremely expensive, and they, they only have like 100 milligrams, right. ridiculous, like $30, uh, you know, just ridiculous. Nuts, yeah, it's nuts. You, you can find, um, well, Anavar is out of the market. So when you when you go to Cancun, especially in Cancun, especially for, for the women, don't buy Extendro. It's out of the market. Right. It's out of the market since like 10 years ago. <laughs> Get it. Don't buy Anavar if you go to Mexico. Don't yeah. buy Anavar. It's fake. Okay. Um, you got, uh, you can get human growth hormone, legitimate human growth hormone, mm -hmm. but you need to go to pharma. Uh, there's a brand that is actually very good in, in uh, it's called PISA, P-I-S-A. Okay. You have to go to the, I mean, the, the, the that's the brand. The pharmacias are called right. Pharmacias La Paz. Like peace, you know. Peace. Yeah, peace. Pharmacias La Paz. You got to you got to look for that and and, and buy some set and deep. It's it's set and deep. Let me let me see if I can get a, a picture of it. Okay. But that's the only pharmaceutical legitimate um, GH GH that I can recommend. Man, there, there are four IU boxes. You put two IUs, babe. 
two I units, two units, and you you wake up and you have your hands swollen. <laughs> how how much would four I use cost in a, in a Mexican pharmacy of legitimate you know piece of GH? Yeah. Uh, the the piece of GH, uh, the four I U box is running two hundred and ten pesos, which is like eleven dollars. Yeah. Okay, that's not bad. So that's like five bucks a day, you know. Yeah. If you do two yeah, IUs, uh, okay, that that's reasonable. Yeah, man. So that's what I what I can recommend. The testosterone. I have actually a box of testosterone here. This yeah, is you showed me that before. That's cool. Yeah. I remember Primo testing. Yeah. Primo testing depot, guys. Once what does that box this, cost? How much cost? It costs um, like ten dollars too. Wow, Sometimes and that's just two hundred fifty milligrams. I'm sorry? Is that just 250 milligrams of primotestin? Yeah, 250 milligrams. It comes in an ampoule, but right. you have to, you have to, I mean, actually buy it. Start, I'm gonna open this shit because I'm gonna put it. How much, how, much you, how much did you say that was again? How much? It costs like $15, okay. maximum $15. Yeah, right. but sometimes you can, you can buy them from a retail guy and he's gonna, he's gonna sell you for like, uh, you know, uh, 10, Ampules for ten dollars. So sometimes you you find it. Good. We used to buy a thousand right. of those ampules back in the day for about four bucks a piece. But <laughs> no, there's much. Yeah, they're, they're that's expensive. That's full. Re well, that's pharmacy price. That's retail. Yeah, that's retail. Yeah, but let me tell you, man. One cc of this is like four or five cc's of an underground. I'm sure, especially if it's ridiculous. not legitimate. Ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, that, that's what I can recommend you, the guys, when came to Mexico. Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna put here a picture of seven. This is the box. Oh, okay. Of what you, this is the, the the GH that is actually legitimate. But let let me touch this, uh, Dave. When you go, when you guys, when everyone go to pharmacies, try to go big name pharmacies. Okay. I don't know the word. Maybe you can help me. I forget the, the word. Cause my my bad English, go like, like McDonald's. Like uh, how do you say when they have oh, a, like a franchise? Lot? Franchise. Yeah, franchise. Go to f big name. Research the names. I'm gonna mm -hmm. tell you anyways. I don't give a shit. But research for the big names uh, pharmacies because the private the private pharmacies like the footage you make. Yeah. You know you you don't know man. Yeah, you they're a little more they they're a little more corrupt. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Hey, well. Yeah. So. It, it's great getting informed because I, I didn't really know a lot of this. I'm glad you kind of filled us in on all this great information on how the stuff's made and what to look for. Uh, yeah. I guess you really don't know. I mean, like I said, I tell everyone to, to get the Roy test kits off my website uh, and test yeah. everything to make sure it's legitimate. But what you're saying is when you go to Mexico as a tourist, beware because they're, they're basically geared to take advantage of, of unbeknownst uh, tourists. Uh, and they yeah. overcharge and they sell you stuff that's not good. You're better off having a connection like yourself. This way they can kind of guide you to the right people, so to speak. Yeah, because there's a, there's a lot of people like trying to ripping off and taking an advantage that when people just doesn't know. And yeah, I mean, your kids have been very, very extremely helpful for mm -hmm. the Mexican community. Oh, cool. Yeah. Very, very, extremely uh, helpful. And, and yeah, I mean, that footage is very good, guys. Go and watch it and... and you have you can have an idea of, of, of what's going on. It's very extremely good video that you make, and I congratulate you about Thank that. Thank you. Thank you, and, and Felix, uh, thanks for taking time out of your schedule and, and and being so honest and coming on here and filling our audience in and our viewership about what's going on down there in the Mexican uh, underground scene. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, see you, Preach. Dave. Yeah, keep us updated. I appreciate it. And that, guys, that's going to take us to the end of another installment of Guru Talk underground. I'm Dave Palumbo. We'll see you next time.